person I ever met belonged in the sky. Just remember you belong down here with us too, okay? The commanding officer called you one of the best pilots he's ever seen. It must be hard being the... A naval aviator? Absolutely. The whole world's looking different. Did you ever think that you'd be in a squadron with a colored aviator? Lieutenant Tom Hudner, Jesse Brown. It's good to meet you. That's another look at the film Devotion, the book Devotion, an epic story of heroism, friendship, and sacrifice. Rates the life and service of Ensign Jesse Brown, the first African American Navy pilot, fighter pilot, I should say. Author Adam Makos has dedicated much of his writing career to sharing the lost stories of American military heroes. And he joins us now to tell us more about this amazing man and the enduring friendships that he made. Adam, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Micah. How did you learn about Jesse Brown? It was a chance encounter. I was at a conference in Washington, D.C. I was a young reporter looking for a story. And there was Captain Tom Hudner in the lobby of this hotel getting ready to go home. And I knew Tom had done something remarkable in the Korean War because he wore the Medal of Honor around his neck at special events and occasions. And I needed to find out what was so special about his wingman, Jesse Brown, that he would risk his life and earn this incredible award. And also, what was a Korean War all about? Because that was their war and I knew so little about it. So I approached Tom that day, he gave me his business card and it changed my life. Tom Hudner, his wingman, as you said, who couldn't save Jesse Brown. I'm not giving anything away because this is, <laughs> this is how, how a life went, but he couldn't save him, but he crash landed in order to save him. They learned a lot, Tom Hudner and Jesse Brown, about racism, about friendship, about a lot of things during that war, didn't they? They certainly did. They were men from different worlds. Uh, Tom Hudner was from the country club scene of New England. He was supposed to go to Harvard. He was supposed to inherit his family business, whereas Jesse was from a sharecropper's field in Mississippi in the Deep South, and he came from nothing. And so it was an amazing pairing of two people. I've always wanted to honor the Korean War because America really shouldn't have a forgotten war. And if you have to put a face to the Korean War, in this case, two faces, these are the absolute perfect people to study. They eventually honored him posthumously, of course, and um, also, Tom Hudner. Tom Hudner had the opportunity to live the rest of his days. He earned the nation's highest medal for valor. They had this incredible encounter that happened December 4th. And I don't want to spoil the movie, but let's just say one of the duo was shot down and trapped in his aircraft behind enemy lines. And the other one attempted one of the most incredible rescues in history. It had never been done before or never been done since. And uh, both of these men were devoted to their country. They were devoted to their shipmates. Jesse was devoted to his wife. And so devotion was just the theme of this story. And it made an awesome title for a movie. And it's a perfectly relevant story for our, our world today. There are a lot of war heroes, but why Jesse Brown and Tom Hudner? I think these men were both uh, driven to defend their country. And, and that's always an admirable quality. It's a selflessness. And we're in a very, frankly, we're in a self-absorbed world today. Everything's about promoting yourself and how far can you get and what can you do to uh, build your own brand. And these guys were bonded by the fact that they both wanted to be naval aviators and they both wanted to defend America. In particular, it's amazing for Jesse because he wanted to defend a country that wouldn't let him even sit anywhere on a bus where he wanted to. So Tom gave up Harvard in the family business. Jesse wanted to fight for a country that didn't love him. And they bonded together and they went off to the Korean War and one of them came home. I think it's absolutely uh, one of the greatest stories of all time. And this was before the civil rights movement. And I know that Jesse Brown didn't want a lot of attention paid to him during his wartime. He was a very humble hero, and, and I don't think he saw himself as a pioneer. He saw himself as a, a young man who wanted to be a Navy fighter pilot. Jesse didn't set out to be the first black airline pilot, could have, 
He could have gone after a number one of, at first at that time in history. He wanted to be a fighter pilot and he wanted to defend America. And I think that's one of his secrets that, that helped him break through Navy flight training, where all other black students had been washed out by, by uh, you know, racist flight instructors. They saw that this young man truly wanted to defend the country that didn't love him back. And how can you not like somebody like that? And that's where Jesse got chances and he showed them that he had the right stuff to be a naval aviator. And he became a pioneer, a forgotten pioneer though. We remember Jackie Robinson, you know, stole a lot of bases, great outfielder, but we forget about this young man because it happened so long ago in a forgotten war. It, it started when he was just 22, you say young man, when he got into, uh, into the war uh, in the first place. What is it like for you to see your story on the big screen? Mm. You know, Micah, it was a, a tremendous feeling of um, satisfaction knowing that mission accomplished had taken place. Um, the longest time I wanted to just honor the Korean War generation. I wanted to see the names of these men remembered. And so when I was on the red carpet, for example, out in Los Angeles and Hollywood living that dream, it was so surreal to hear the actor Glenn Powell talking about Tom Hudner and Jonathan Majors saying Jesse would have done this and Jesse would have done that. Even Joe Jonas of the Jonas Brothers was there. <laughs> he, he had a role in the film. He played Marty Good, one of the Navy pilots. And Marty and then Joe is there talking about Marty Good. I mean, when you get one of the Jonas Brothers to talk about a hero who flew 70 years ago, I mean, we've done something. We've done something great. And, you know, after this movie comes out, they're going to need a new name for the Korean War. Yeah. Because how can you call it the Forgotten War with a movie like this? What about Jesse Brown's relatives? How they receive this? The producers of the movie were really um, genuinely invested. And so from the very beginning, they brought in both of the families, invited them to the events, let them meet the screenwriters, anything they could do to loop in the families. And I really had no concerns because when they came to me wanting to make a true story, they were already taking the road less traveled. It would have been so easy to just say, okay, let's, let's make a fictional version and we'll just change their names and we can do whatever we want. No, they said, we want to do this right. We want to create a story that resonates with people. And so to do that, we're going to tell the story of real men. And we're going to bring in the real families and we're going to show this movie to them and we're going to, we're going to let them hold us accountable. And in the end, it produced something wonderful because everybody from A to Z cared so deeply about this process. And the families loved this. So they were just out in L.A. Then they came to Washington. They're barnstorming with us, uh, <laughs> promoting the heck out of this movie. So that's the ultimate endorsement you can get. Adam, where are Jesse Brown's remains? Jesse Brown's remains, um, well, let's just say they're still missing in action to this day. Um, they're resting somewhere on a North Korean mountainside. Uh, in all these years, there, there hasn't been that thawing of relations that we need to really find him. And so um, I had gone in 20, uh, I guess 2013, Captain Tom Hudner and I went back to North Korea mm. and uh, we went there to try to find Jesse. In the end, the weather wasn't cooperating. We couldn't get to the place we needed to. So instead we negotiated with the North Korean military. So we sat down across from their colonels. I mean, these are guys you're supposed to be scared of, but they actually showed a lot of respect to us because of Tom. And we said, hey, you know, this American hero is still resting in your soil, and it would be great for our country if we could get him back, and it'd be great for yours if you could help us do that. And they came back and they said, Kim Jong-un, the Marshal Kim Jong-un, the Supreme Leader, wishes to find Jesse Brown too. And he admires Tom Hudner coming so far after so long to keep a promise to a friend. And he pledged that his military would look for Jesse. Maybe they found him by now. We don't know. So, Adam, this is really a labor of love for you, isn't it? Oh, Micah, I met Tom Hudner in 2007. It's now 2022 when this movie's coming out. And you really don't put in that much time unless the story speaks to you on that deep of a level. Because you're really giving a chunk of your life to a particular tale. And it's, it's because I believe that, that there was an example in 1950 that 
our world still needs to learn yeah. today. All right. Thank you, Adam Makos. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see the movie. Devotion, an uh, epic story of heroism, friendship, and sacrifice. It's available in bookstores and online, and the movie's out right now.